So in this bucket is um, it's water thickened with a seaweed powder so that it becomes more a little bit more viscous and it allows the acrylic paint um, to not sink and it, it floats on the top surface. So this is what's called our size. This does all the physical work in a way. Each sheet of paper has been coated um, with alum. Um, so that's aluminium sulfate. It's usually sold to make hydrangeas more blue. But the reason why we use it in paper marbling, and I don't quite understand the chemistry of it, but um, the paint sticks to the alum. Um, and then we have to rinse, rinse away or wash off the excess uh, seaweed. And you can do that without the ink running off the page, without the paint running off the page. Okay, so those are the two things I've done behind the scenes. I've thickened the water with carrageenan and I've coated the paper with alum or um, aluminum sulfate. The other thing, I'm just using very standard um, student sort of acrylic paints. Um, different pigments behave differently. So blues, for example, might spread out more quickly. Some pigments don't expand very well and they'll sink. Um, so you have to learn a bit more about how each pigment interacts. And what I'll do is I'll do a couple of quick demonstrations and then people can come up and give it a go yourself. Typically, we dip paintbrushes into the cup and we you tap it and that'll make smaller, finer droplets. Um, I'm gonna just mainly do these sort of dripper, like this more calm dripping because otherwise um, I might splatter someone. <laughs> Um, you can add um, what's called ox gall. It's like a, the bile from an ox gallbladder. And that'll help a pigment that doesn't spread out very easily to spread out more easily. So you can use the synthetic photo uh, wetting agent or you can use the traditional ox gall. Some real hardcore people um, will buy an ox gall from a butcher and oh process, it, process it themselves. The pigments will stay separated and they won't, they won't interact. Well, they'll interact by pushing and pulling each other, but they won't color mix, which is one of the main things that you need. And I do go in a variety of different orders, because you can see now this, this kind of pink has a uh, stronger expansion than some of the other pigments, and it's pushing pigments around. And you get what's called veining. When, when some of the paint gets pushed out and thins out, you get a veining kind of texture. And the thing that's kind of beautiful about it is that you kind of are like dragging it through the current, but in the in the paint sort of um, thins out, but it doesn't mix. So your, your yeah. color mixing isn't actually happening. It's just getting tighter and tighter threads. At this stage, I, I will tend to do one or two more drops to kind of interrupt that pattern. And you always have to learn like which pigments do the most expanding. looks a little muddy at first um, because some of the excess pigment is kind of floating on the top surface. Um, and so, yeah, th this area here is a little muddy. It's a bit cleaner up on that edge. And some of that is depending on how you lay down the, under the marble. Uh, what I do like often is some of the weird patterns that start occurring after the first pull. So um, you can't start again with a whole new pattern. So that's by like really dragging the paper through the size and then dropping it. Um, yeah, so um, who wants to? Anyone? I've got plenty of papers prepared, so. Uh, there we go.